Greetings, and welcome to the third in the series, The Badger Rampant Reads Kipling. This is another one of Kipling's lesser known poems from A School History of England, and so it won't be a surprise that it's another history poem. There will be some notes at the end, but for now, here is Norman and Saxon. My son, said the Norman Baron, I am dying, and you will be heir to all the broad acres in England that William gave me for share, when he conquered the Saxon at Hastings, and a nice little handful it is. But before you go over to rule it, I want you to understand this. The Saxon is not like us Normans. His manners are not so polite but he never means anything serious till he talks about justice and right. When he stands like an ox in the furrow, with his sullen set eyes on your own, and grumbles, This isn't fair dealing. My son, leave the Saxon alone. You can horsewhip your Gascony archers, or torture your Picardy spears, but don't try that game on the Saxon. You'll have the hell brood round your ears. From the richest old thane in the county to the poorest chained serf in the field, they'll be at you and on you like hornets, and if you are wise, you will yield. But first you must master their language, their dialect, proverbs and songs. Don't trust any clerk to interpret when they come with the tale of their wrongs. Let them know that you know what they're saying. Let them feel that you know what to say. Yes. Even when you want to go hunting, hear em out if it takes you all day. They'll drink every hour of the daylight and poach every hour of the dark. It's a sport that the rabbits thereafter, with plenty of game in the park. Don't hang them or cut off their fingers. That's wasteful as well as unkind. For a hard-bitten South Country poacher makes the best man-at-arms you can find. Appear with your wife and the children at their weddings and funerals and feasts. Be polite but not friendly to bishops. Be good to all poor parish priests. Say we, us and ours when you're talking, instead of you fellows and I. Don't ride over seeds, keep your temper, and never you tell them a lie. This is another of Kipling's history poems, and is set a generation after the invasion by William, Duke of Normandy, in 1066. William defeated the Saxon King of England, Harold Godwinson, and became king himself. Like previous conquests, the population was not replaced in its entirety, but nearly all of the land in England was handed out to William's followers, the men who had made him king. The Anglo-Saxon nobility was replaced almost entirely by Normans. The authority of these Norman lords had been won by the sword and was maintained by the sword, and especially by many castles built the length and breadth of the land. The Normans and the English they ruled were separated by both social status and national cultural identity, and relations between them were not easy. The gap between the Anglo-Norman families and those they ruled took a long time to break down and for the Normans to start to think of themselves as English, but it did happen. By the time of the reign of Edward I, there was a general English national feeling across the social classes, although the political and legal business of the country would continue to be conducted in French for a long time to come. English or not, there was, of course, still a big social gap, and having Norman ancestry remained a mark of social status for centuries. In 1842, when Alfred Lord Tennyson was writing a poem about an aristocratic lady who broke the heart of her low-born suitor, he invoked the image of Norman ancestry, writing, Kind hearts are more than coronets, and simple faith than Norman blood. When Kipling wrote this poem, the British Empire was only a few years away 
from its greatest extent, and was at the height of its power. It looked very much like the empire would go on for many generations. Thousands of the children learning history from Fletcher's book would go on to help administer and rule lands and people around the world. As he does with other poems in the book, Kipling uses an example from English history to teach a lesson in his time. Here the idea of the Norman Lord teaching his son how best to rule his Saxon tenants is used to help instill in the schoolchildren of the early 20th century the idea of ruling by understanding those being ruled rather than riding roughshod over them. Kipling could not have known that two world wars would end the imperial experiment before such ideas could truly flourish. I hope you've enjoyed Norman and Saxon. There will be more Kipling in due course, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share. In the meantime, thank you for watching.